Hello everyone and welcome back to another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new treasure map versus the elite performers. Yeah, I have some really good speed teams that I want to show you. And they all aren't exactly accessible, but then again, these aren't exactly meant to be. I'll make a separate video with free to play teams and I know a few people will appreciate that. But for now, let's get into my speed teams. So against the first mini boss, which is page one. So page one is a int mini boss. A very reoccurring theme in this treasure map is that a lot of the mini bosses are the int type. So make sure you most of your teams are using Psy units. For this one, we are using Yamato as our captain. As per usual, the first mini boss, every unit in the game gets cooldown. So that makes it a bit easier to team build for this mini boss in particular. For this one, there's three turns of despair after sockets. We have two turns of hunger. Uh, Yamato gets around that with her potential abilities. We have special bind paralysis, and we also have to deal with enemy resilience. The enemy has a delay immunity, so we can use a defense down conditional attack booster. Uh, so let's see what we are doing in this team in particular. As for the despair, uh, as well as the paralysis and the special bind, we are going to use the Toki, Momonosuke, and Hiyori unit. This is a really good character and we're going to use them on stage 2. You could also use them on stage 1, whichever one is a bit easier for you, to, for you to remember. But make sure you use them before the final stage and use them on uh, to give the Toki effect to your captains. And that way on the final stage, you won't get inflicted with the, paral with the despair and your captains won't get inflicted with paralysis or special bind. So that's a really good uh, way to get around those debuffs. They also give our captains a uh, 3.5x attack and orb boost, which is really good considering our captain Yamato is a Psy unit. So she's going to be dealing a lot of damage to the enemy. So that's really nice to have. As for the rest of the team here, we have Jack there, and the only reason we have him there is because he has a crewmate ability that allows him to also resist paralysis. And the reason I, th this is super important is because the rest of the crew besides the captains will still have paralysis. And unfortunately, we won't have a way to start the chain if all the other units are paralyzed. So having Jack there allows us to get one other unit free from, from paralysis that will allow us to start the chain. We then have Eneru to wave clear on stage 1 and also change our type orbs into matching. Besides that we don't have a way to get matching orbs, so with him getting around all the type orbs, we still have recovery and tandem that, uh, that isn't counted as favorable, which is why we are running the Germa ship. Germa ship is not only good to make recovery and tandem orbs beneficial, but also to give us minus 2 cooldown which is important to make sure that Momonosuke, uh, the Toki legend as well as the Kid and Law units are already on stage 2. After using Toki on stage 2, we'll also use the special of Kid and Law to wave clear, as well as give us a 3 turn uh, end of turn damage and a bunch of chain buffs. Kid and Law could not be a better unit for this quest, uh, they'll allow us to get around the resilience on the final stage with that end of turn damage, since it does carry over, and we'll also have a bunch of chain buffs on the final stage. So I believe the, the, the starting chain after one good is a 3x chain if I'm not mistaken because you also have to remember that Yamato has this effect in her captain ability uh, that allows you to get a 0.3 chain boost uh, just inbuilt as, uh, if you use her as your captain. So having that is really good. We have the support of waifus on your kid and law because they will uh, still be one cooldown short on stage 2. So we need that support to make sure they are ready. Unfortunately, I don't think that support is replaceable. There's no other units in the game that can give you cooldown on stage 2. So that's the basic rundown of this team. Stage 1, we use Eneru for wave clear, cooldown and also giving us matching orbs. Stage 2, we use Toki on our captains and then we use Kid and Lord to wave clear and give us uh, end of turn damage and chain buffs. Final stage, we just tap with our units, starting off with your Jack and then with your two Yamatos, they'll be hitting like a truck. If you also want to, you could also uh, use Yamato special um, uh, and the, uh, to give you one orbs and also you could use the VV support for a color affinity but I don't think that will ever be necessary and uh, if, you, if anything you should add the support of um, King the Legend as on your jack because this is a very good chain support and it will allow you to get a 4x starting chain. Now I don't recommend using the support until it's required because unfortunately that chain boost 
will activate the super type of your Yamato, which will waste a few seconds, so I don't recommend using the Sport of King until it becomes absolutely necessary. But overall, the 3.5x attack and all boost and all the chain buffs should be enough. Let's move on to the next mini boss, which is uh, Ulti and Black Maria. So for this mini boss, we are using a combination of very good legends in the slasher class being Kdad as well as the Toki and Odin unit. So let's explain this quest. Once again, a int mini boss and unfortunately not all units get cooldown for this quest or for the rest of the mini bosses. We have Psy, Quick and Strength units getting cooldown. Final stage, we have seven turns of despair, one turn of crewmate special rewind, a bunch of block orbs, five turns of attack down as well as five turns of buying to our left column uh, that goes on to five after sockets. So how this is going to work is the bind we have Kuma with a, a support of Bonnie for getting around the five turns of bind so we don't have to worry about the bind at all. Then we have Kdad which is a very good unit for cooldown, uh, a very good captain for cooldown as well as um, giving us one orbs on stage one uh, with his super type. The super type, I mean super class, sorry, also allows us to get wave clear on stage one. So it's a very nice effect to have, which is why we're running him as our captain. As for the despair, we're going to use our Odi, uh, our Odi, <laughs> our Odin and Toki to get around all the despair, as well as give us a color frenzy of 2.75x and a minus 50% enemy slasher resistance down. Now, there's a lot of other units you could use here instead of Toki and Odin. Um, to get around the despair, but there's no other unit that's going to allow us to get as much damage as this unit. The color affinity is so monstrous as well as that resistance down, it's a very nice effect to have. Even though it's a dual unit, the special doesn't take too long to activate as I will show you uh, after each mini boss explaining, I'll show you a bit of a clip that shows how fast these specials activate. Then on stage 1 we're going to use the super class of Odin. Uh, I mean K Dad to give us one orbs and wave clear. Stage two will use Zoro for an orb boost of 2.25x for the final stage and also very very fast wave clear. Final stage we'll use Odin and Toki as well as the um, what's his face X Drake to give us a attack boost of 2.25x for our Zoro and also get around some of the other debuffs as well as the special rewind. That's basically it for this team, two specials, one support on the final stage. You'll see uh, it's quite fast. Uh, unfortunately, the final stage isn't the best in terms of speed because of X Drake. His attack boost is wastes a bit of time in the animation, but it's still a very solid team in terms of speed, and I'm very happy with the amount of damage it will be able to output. So that's going to be it for this team. Let's move on to the next one against Sasaki. <laughs> Okay, so Sasaki here is a once again an inter mini boss. There's so many of these. Luckily, the final one is a quick one, uh, making it a bit more um, easy to work with because you don't want to run out of good units, uh, good side legends, especially for for new players who don't have a lot of legends. So against this mini boss, we have powers, fighter, and free spirit that get uh, all their cooldowns, their versus effect, and their super switches uh, charged. As for the debuffs, we have special rewind of two, and then the uh, seven turns of special bind. The second I saw that, I was like, Halloween, uh, Halloween Ace is the perfect unit for this. He gets around special rewind and also special bind in his captain ability. We also have seven turns of paralysis, a bunch of chain attack down, as well as enemy. A defensive effects of defense up and also a slot barrier so let's see how we're gonna get around all of this so once again as I said earlier we are using our ace as our captain to negate the special bind and the rewind we're gonna use the special of our ace on stage one he's a very fast wave clearer as you will see in a few in a few minutes uh, then we're gonna have Kikinojo and Izo on stage two to wave clear and give us a 3.5x chain lock which will allow us to get not only a lot of damage on stage 3, but also get around the chain attack down. 
Then we have Sanji, who's gonna set all of our orbs to tandem at the start of the quest, which will allow us to get around the barrier. The barrier is only one tandem orb, so don't worry about uh, having to hit a lot of your characters to get around the barrier. It's just have a good on one of your characters and then a perfect on Luffy, and you will be fine. Then on the final stage, we'll use Akainu to give the enemy defense down to zero, proc it with a conditional attack boost, and get around uh, five of the turns of the paralysis. Then we'll use the support of our um, what's his face Rayleigh on our Luffy to get around the last two turns of the paralysis. Besides that, Luffy's just there for a stat stick. He is a fighter character, so he gets boosted by Halloween Ace. So on the final stage, just use your Akainu as well as your Ace special. If you want to, you can also use your friend Captain Ace. I mean. Never mind. You could also use uh, some supports for color affinity, such as the one on uh, what's her name, uh, Akainu. So using that VV support will allow you to get color affinity. Uh, unfortunately, there is no orb boost in this team, which is why it's a bit lackluster. But the damage is really good here, still and regardless. And I'm pretty happy with this team. They definitely could be uh, a more uh, a better damage uh, option. And if I do find improvements to make it a bit high damage, I will tell you in the comments or in a separate video when I go through the treasure map itself. So that's gonna be it for this team. It's very fast as you'll see in a moment and it's also fairly good in terms of the damage. As for the final mini boss against Huzu, a quick unit, and I'm very, very happy with this team. As for the final boss versus the lead performers, they are a Psy boss, so we want to be running predominantly int. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of good boosted units uh, that are, are into the int type, therefore I am running the new kid in law as my friend captain, a very good int unit that I can use to deal a lot of damage. As you'll see here on this team, I do have a blank spot that is meant to be occupied by the Pirate King Adventures free to play Otama. I don't, I haven't gotten it yet, I've been slacking on Pirate King Adventures, but if you have it, just put it there and then the team will work perfectly fine. As for how the team works, let's take a look at the gimmicks on stages 2 and 3. So on stage 2, there's going to be a bunch of annoying effects, most of these can be annoyed, uh, ignored, the barrier, the remove SFX and the burn can all be ignored. As for the resilience, it's very annoying to get around it because it's very hard to get end of turn damage dealers that are on the boosted list. And there's not, not a lot of supports that actually give end of turn damage and none of them work in this scenario. Most of those supports work on the final stage but this is on the second stage so it's a bit harder to find a good support. As for getting around the resilience, um, we're using Yamato to get around 6 of the turns. It's so annoying, I wish she, she got around all 7 turns because she is a very good booster of 1.4x. You might be wondering why we're running a non-boosted unit, but no, there's just a bit of a glitch going on with the uh, treasure map builder in-game, and it's showing up as the boosted list from last treasure map. So actually, Yamato is a 1.4x booster, Luffy is a 1.35x, and then Moria is a 1.25x. So just don't get confused. It's just a bit of an area. Mora is going to get around the other turn of the resilience and then we can kill the enemy from there. We're going to ignore the burn and we're also going to ignore the remove is fixed. So make sure you hit your perfects uh, or just make sure you hit at least great. Uh, you're going to have to have a bit of good tap timing if you want to use this team. But I'm going for the maximum amount of points while still having 
being able to get around all the gimmicks. So I'm gonna hit through that. And with uh, since we do have to hit through the burn, I do recommend using a high HP ship such as the dinghy. If you do have the ship upgraded like I do, it's a very good ship for 1.5x HP to ensure that we have enough HP to survive stage two. We also use Luffy special and uh, X super special on stage two. And if since he's gonna go into gear five with his X super, we can ignore the barrier, he'll go straight through it. So with all that, we'll have a full board of matching orbs. We'll have a orb boost color affinity. We'll have improved matching orbs with Luffy's X super and we should easily be able to kill. Then on the final stage, we can use the special of our, our uh, Kid and Law as well as the Super Swap effect to give us a very good chain multiplica multiplicative buff as well as an attack boost. They'll also buff the effects of Super Typing which is very nice. We can then use the special of our uh, Blackbeard to give us a 1.75x or boost for our int units which is very nice and then also give us a chain boundary effect that will work very well with the chain multiplicative buff from our kid and law. We can use Yamato for a color affinity as well as a enemy resistance down. Um, oh wait, no, no, never mind. We already used Yamato on stage two, my bad. I'm a bit tired guys, uh, sorry. And then we have to get around seven turns of special bind. Uh, we get around five of those turns with the Pirate King Adventures Otama, the other two turns with your uh, Kid Sabo. And then we can get around the Paralysis with Otama as well as the Nami support. So Otama is a very good unit for the utility on the final stage. Very, very key unit. As for the matching orbs on the final stage... Um... Yeah, so the matching orbs on the final stage, we get bla block orbs. Uh, I'll just check now, and the Kid in Law special does get around block orbs, changes them into matching, which is very nice. We have an attack boost, a very nice attack boost from Kid in Law. We have chain multiplicative, multiplicative of 1.4x, a uh, chain boundary from our Blackbeard, as well as a 1.75x orb boost. You could also add a support to Moria for color affinity, such as Tal Nami. Uh, just for some color affinity and that's going to be it for this team that's chips and it should be very very easy to win there's a lot of damage here and also pretty good points from uh, without any of the new batch so i'm pretty happy with that one let's get into the intrusion against big mom and against big mom she is a int type so here we can shine with all the amazing psi units that are on the boosted list mainly gear 5 luffy himself works so well with the kid and law and having him have type advantage is very nice. Since Kid and Law is a dual int and psi unit, they can also be, uh, they can also have type advantage in this uh, intrusion. So this intrusion is very easy. Stage two, we're just going to use the X super of our Luffy, and that will allow us to get uh, around the barrier as well as the threshold on the second stage. The resilience will use Yamato to get around all three turns. The defense up will use the treasure map Frankie. And with all that, we'll have easily gotten around everything on stage 2. There's still block orbs, so we'll use the special of our Luffy to change those into matching. And give us a bunch of damage boosts to make sure we can actually kill stage 2. There's no way after all that we still won't have enough damage. We will be destroying, absolutely demolishing stage 2. So I'm pretty happy with that. And then on the final stage, we can use the special of our... Um, of our kid and law for an attack boost improve the uh, effects of super type and then also the swap effect for a chain multiplicative we can then use the special of our komurasaki to get around um what does what does komurasaki even do she gets around um literally nothing she's just there for point boost and having type advantage so you can literally replace her with anyone i don't see why not and then we can use the special of our, uh, what's his name, Sanji and Judge, which will allow us to get around the paralysis orbs. I also uh, forgot one thing, you should add, um, I was going to say you should add Brulee to get around the block orbs because it's a mix of block and paralysis orbs. But I forgot, once again, the Kid in Law does change the block orbs into matching. The paralysis orbs will be gotten around with your Sanji and Judge. And with all that, you should be fine. You get a bunch of damage boosts from Sanji and Judge, especially if they are at level not break maxed. This is definitely not the most 
efficient team, but it is very good in terms of the point boost. Everyone here is a 1.385x booster or higher besides Frankie. So I'm pretty happy with this. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about the teams, ask them down below. If you have any questions besides that, just about the game in general, I'm always here to help, especially if you are a beginner. I'll have a video up separately for accessible teams in the near future. So keep a lookout for that. But with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace and I'm out.